Hi everybody. So today I am going to talk about making local adjustments with masks in Photoshop. Okay. Um, so let me find an image that we'd like to work with. So we've got this image right here and we're going to open it up. It'll open up. It's a raw file. So it's going to open up in Adobe camera raw. I've already made a couple little changes in there. I'm happy with this. This is a good image to work with uh, in masking. Now, what I'm talking about is like when we make adjustments normally, whether it's in Adobe Camera Raw or in Photoshop through an adjustment layer, when we apply the effect, it affects the whole image. And what we're talking about today is how to make a local a change uh, in an image. So an adjustment layer only affects one part, the part you want to ch change. So we could do this, we could also accomplish this in Adobe Camera Raw using, say, the adjustment brush, where we could, for example, one of the issues that I have in this image is the foreground has is in a deep shadow. And so I'd like to brighten that up, but I don't want to brighten the whole image up because then I'll lose definition in the sky. So I could come here and I could just come right in here and I could brighten this up this way with an adjustment brush. But I'm going to show you how to do the same thing in Photoshop, right? Um, there's some advantage of learning this process in Photoshop because Photoshop allows you to do more advanced features, but masking and using masking with layers is something that you can always, and is, and is very, very powerful tool. So we're just going to start with the basics, okay? So um, let me kind of, let me, let me kind of start with this. We're going to go ahead and open this up into Photoshop and then we can get started. There we go. Okay, so we've got our image. Um, let's start with just a simple adjustment layer. I'm going to come down to my adjustment I layer icon here in my layers panel, do a curves layer, right? Classic curves layer. And I'm just going to, you know, I'd like to brighten this lower area up so I could I could just start working on the curve or I can use this little tool here, this little hand tool, and I can pinpoint an area that I'd like to brighten. So I'm this area, and you can see as I'm moving my mouse around on the image, you can see a little circle within the curves window there. You can see it, and it moves around. So then I understand the relationship between my curves uh, layer, my curves adjustment layer, and what actually where my where where my the parts of the image right and you also notice that little histogram there because that relates so if i'm in the dark areas it's going to be down on the lower left if i go up to brighter areas it's going to go up uh to the upper right on that curve okay so what i'd like to do is oops sorry about that but what i'd like to do then is i i'm going to click on say like one of these bushes and I'm going to pull it up and then you can kind of see that I'm brightening things there and then maybe in another dark area I'll click again and I'll make another point and make that a little dark that also emphasize a little bit of my um, contrast there I'm going to not lose too much contrast it's not just going to get bright but I'm also going to retain some contrast right so I'm happy with that. That's looking much better down in there. But the problem is it's also made this whole part of my image much too bright. And if I turn it off, I can really see how much detail I've lost in the sky and even on this hillside, uh, all the cactus and stuff. So what I want to do is I want to keep the keep it in the bottom, but I want to turn off the top. And I'm going to do that by using a mask. OK, so where are the masks? OK, well, the masks Actually, when I made this adjustment layer here, this curves adjustment layer, I got this. I not only uh, have the mask itself, the curves layer itself here, which is right here, um, but I also have this little um, thumbnail. And this little thumbnail is actually my uh, my mask. It's a representation of my mask. And right now, it's all white, so it's not there. It's not on. What I want to do is I want to paint onto my mask and I'm going to use black and wherever I put black paint, the mask is going to block out the effect of that curves layer. So let's let's take a look at that. OK, so here we go. So I'm going to minimize this. I need to use a brush tool to do this. This is the simplest way to, to work off a mask is with the, the brush tool. So I'm going to have my brush tool. You can see there it is. It's a nice size. 
I'm going to use an opacity of 100%, and we're just going to do something really obvious to so you understand how this works. I need to paint with black to paint onto my mask to activate the mask and block the effect. So I need to come down to my foreground background color here, and I need to switch it over to black. And now I've got an opacity of 100%. That's good. And um, I'm going to go ahead and use a, uh, a, a high hardness just so it's really obvious where the line is. And so I'm just going to come down, and I'm going to start painting. And you can see as I do this, uh, I am affecting the image. And now uh, the right side is basically like the curves layer is never was on, OK? And the left side is where the that a curves adjustment layer has been applied. And you can see now that I did that, I've updated this layer mask. And you can see on the right, it's black, which means that it's not active. And you can see what that looks like in the image. And on the right, it's white. And that's where it is applied. OK, so this is a bit arbitrary. I would never do this in the image left side, right side, you know. So I don't, I'm, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to start again. I'm going to actually show you how I would use it. So to delete this, you can right click or control click on a Mac. You get the sub layer and you, you have a choice. You can disable it, but I don't really want to disable it. That's good if I wanted to turn it off and just check it out. Um, I want to delete the layer mask. So I'm going to click delete. It's going to open up. And now I need to get a new layer mask. Okay. By default, when you make a new adjustment layer, the mask is there. But if you delete the mask, you have to add it back manually. And the easy way to do that is to come down to the bottom of the panel and there's a little rectangle with a circle, black circle in the middle. You just click on that and voila, you just have to be select. You have to have that layer that you're working on selected and it's going to add the mask right back in. So now this time I'm going to use my brush tool, but I'm going to decrease my hardness almost down to zero because I want a fuzzy edge. And the reason I want a fuzzy edge is because I want to be able to blend this okay blending makes things easier to hide if i if i have a hard sharp um, brush then it's really hard to to mask at interfaces right like if i just wanted to mask this sky out like this well you know the top's going to work but I, i'm going to have trouble right along that edge blending it right you can see where i just I'm, it's not perfect i'm just doing this with a big big brush so but if instead of doing that if i took my hardness down to almost nothing and now I can come in and I can blend this and wow look all of a sudden um, my everything is looking pretty good here and you're not now if you look at this image you wouldn't know that I masked it right and it was really quick it was really simple but boy is it effective right so and if we come down here and we look uh, I just held down my Option key or Alt key on a PC to click on my thumbnail mask. You could see the whole thing. So you can see where the mask is. Everywhere where it's black, the mask is on, which means that the effect is, is not happening. It's not passing through down to the image layer. Okay. Another way of visualizing a mask, which I really like, is using the Backspace key on on the keyboard. And that's going to make my mask show up as a transparent color. And so you can see anything that's red is masked. Anything that's not is active and is going to have the effect applied. So that's kind of nice. You can even work while this is on. You can work uh, with your brush tool. Um, and I could just paint. I could paint this off a little bit right now if I wanted to. Um, you can see I'm kind of like painting it off with the white. And as I do that, my adjustment. Uh, my thumbnail of my mask is also changing, so uh, this is great. Or I can go back and I can click on the black and I can add to that mask like this. And you can really see kind of how effective you are. And if you like, you know, you can adjust the hardness, you can adjust the opacity. Now, adjusting the opacity is really great because um, let's turn this off just so we can see the effect, right? So. We, we, we've now, the, the sky is not a, being affected, just the, the hillside and also my shadow area, right, with this curve. And I, I really like the way the shadow area looks. I really like that the sky is not being affected. Right now, the hillside is being affected. Um, it's a little too much for me, so I want to tone that down, okay? Now, I could just go come in and I could paint, paint, paint with my black brush in here and darken it down you know like basically apply the mask so now if i look you know you can see the mask is all the way down in here but 
you know, the problem with that is it's like, well, that's not bad, but it's just a little bit too heavy. It's a little bit too, too dark. I'd like, I would like to brighten that up a little bit. Well, I can do that with my mask instead of using, I'm still going to use my black and my white colors. Always use that when you're, when you're painting masks, that's the way to go. What we can do is you can adjust your opacity up here. So instead of being at an opacity of hundred percent, maybe I'll be at an opacity of say 30% or something. And now I could come in and because this is already on, right? Like my mask is right there. What I could do is I'm, I'm gonna go back to white so I can paint some of that mask off, but I'm only at 30% opacity. So what's gonna happen is it's just not as intense as it used to be. Okay, so I'm kind of doing it. And each time I'm clicking, I'm, I'm removing some. One of the ways that the, the brush tool works is if I'm clicking and holding and keep going over an area, it's not gonna keep taking off more and more of this 30% opacity, it's gonna take off a little bit. Now it's a little hard to visualize what's actually happening here. So I'm gonna turn my mask back off so I can see. And I'm gonna turn this whole thing off. And now I can see this is the way the image was. <clears throat> and then this is when I applied the effect. So I've, I've added some light, but it's not nearly as bright as if I, I'm gonna go in and disable the mask. Now you can see that's with all the way bright on that hillside. So I am, I'm still taking off, whoops, I didn't need to delete it. I wanted to, whoops, I wanted to, I'm going a little too fast. Um, hold my, there we go. Now let's enable the mask back. So you can see that I have been darkening that. I, I, it's not fully effect. And if you actually take a close look at this mask, you can see what I've actually been doing. The top is all black. So it's like fully eliminating the effect. But in this, in between, now I've created this gray zone. So I'm partially applying the mask. And this is what makes Photoshop so amazing is that I can, I can, I can just finally dial in exactly what I want. A little bit more, a little bit less here. I want this a little bit applied, all the way applied. And you do that with just the, and all we're using is the brush tool. There's all kinds of other selection tools, um, ways to, to make more sophisticated masks that represent the exact outline of things. We'll get there, but right now we're just talking about the basics and the basics can be so powerful and can help you. And it's really, you can see the similarities between this and what the adjustment brush does in Adobe Camera Raw because that adjustment brush is mirrored off of this idea. Um, but these are the baby steps. This is like how we get started in Photoshop. And this is uh, really important. So I'm gonna stop at this point. I do wanna add to this and show you how you can make this even a little bit more complicated more sophisticated in the next part. So thanks for watching.